Hello all, very good morning. Everyone are able to see the screen which I have shared? Yes, I can see it. Okay, thank you. So how do you feel attending the classes on uh, Sunday, Sunday morning? <laughs> it's good. Okay. It's very detailed. Thank very you. well explained. Thank you for that. Thank you. So let's start. It's already been five minutes. Okay. <clears throat> See, ultimately, if we look into the context of learning Java, basically we are learning Java to automate the test cases or to write the test cases using in, in Selenium using Java. Right? So just uh, today's session, I'm going to start with a simple uh, case study. Okay. Imagine there is a matrimonial website. There's a matrimonial website and in the matrimonial website there is a registration page. In the registration page there are a lot of fields present. For example, name as one field. Name as one field. Okay, then uh, age, age as another field, height, height as another field, whether you are a salaried employee or not, whether you are a salaried employee or not, S, as no the radio box. Okay, this is a radio button. Probably your address. It's a text area. And contact. Right? Your contact number. So probably you will have an option to upload the photo or some other profile, etc. Correct. So then you have to finally you just have to click on a button saying register. Register. Fine. This is the page and you are supposed to automate this page or you are supposed to write the script for testing this page. Fine. Look into it. A person, imagine the user of this website, a user of this website, the person enters all the detail, the person enters all the detail, okay, click on register. Once the person click on register, if it is positive registration, some home page should appear, okay. If the person hasn't entered the data properly, then it must come back to the same page with some error message saying that mandatory fields please enter with some error messages. Typically it's a one test scenario. Okay. Now, if you want to automate this whole page, if you want to write the automation script for this entire page, there are two things which are involved. One is there are a lot of data involved here. There are a lot of data involved first thing. Second thing, by using this data, you are going to perform some function or you are going to perform some operation. You are going to perform some function or some operation. What is that function? A registration function. Registration is the function. So what I am trying to explain is, Whenever you try to perform some action, for example, clicking on this button is an action. When you perform this action, something must happen. What is that something? The registration. All the details must be saved in the database. That's the functionality that should, that should happen. But this functionality internally uses all the data. Internally uses all the data. Am I clear? So to represent this, 
we can this this we can call it as the data members these are all called as the data members the data members okay and to represent the data in the last class we have seen something called data types what are the very most mostly used data types in java string int long float double char and then boolean these are all very very mostly used data types in java string is used for alphabets alphanumeric along with uh, some special special characters example with this example now let's have some interactive session okay by looking into this you please tell me you guys please tell me what can be the data type of what can be the data type of name someone let's say someone enters string, string. yes it is string perfect how about age int integer int yes int or integer height float float, float. perfect how about the salaried employee boolean boolean uh, perfect boolean because here we use only you know yes or no that is true or false address again string uh, string perfect the contact very important long long so to represent this data i use these data types right simple example upper case yes okay it is upper case yes string name equal to john then integer age equal to 25 then uh, float height equal to let's say 6.2 inch so this is float that's why i end this with f next boolean salad equal to true the last one address string address equal to some address some address and the last one is contact so it is long contact equal to this is how i represent all the data okay we call it as data member we call it as data member under data member under data member there are two types of data one is called variable another one is called constant another one is called constant it is simple common sense variable means the data member for which the data or the value varies height may vary today i may not be salaried employee certainly in future i may become a salaried employee i may change my contact number okay i may change my name also possibility my age changes so there are the data which changes is called as the variable and the data which does not change is called as a constant okay for example for example gender generally the gender does not change though it is possible to change the gender but generally it does not change so it's becoming very common now in europe <laughs> oh is it okay it's now, it's okay. Now. okay so from europe uh, yeah. 
test case it is yes it is variable uh, at least in india it is uh, the constant okay <laughs> okay fine good just taking it as an instance so uh, string gender gender let's say i consider the gender as female so this is as of now this is a variable how can you make it as a constant by declaring this variable with the keyword final the data member becomes constant on the other way if you want to define or declare a data member as constant again i forgot to no i am recording okay to declare any data member as constant we need to define it as final so final is a keyword okay here i would like to introduce one best practice the final data members once it is declared you cannot change it now i cannot change gender equal to male the compiler gives me an error so because this data member is a final and i cannot change it okay first thing second thing it's a good practice that the data members which are final must be declared in upper case must be declared in upper case it is just a good practice but it is not the rule okay it's not the rule it's just a good practice clear this is called the final data members and here we get error why we get error because i'm trying to change the final member the final data member or constant cannot be changed okay for example um uh, double or uh, or uh, let's say uh, uh integer weight my weight is let's say my weight is 50 50 50 kg it may vary it may become weight equal to 52 or it may become weight equal to 47 anything so this is called variable this is called variable but this is called constant this is called constant only constant should be declared in upper case as per the good practice these are all lower case so what is the standard <clears throat> or we call it as naming convention what is the naming convention that is used naming convention used to declare the class to declare data members right so let's understand the naming standards or best industry practice let's understand the best industry practice okay somewhere here itself i'll write it for the class for the class generally it must start with an upper case and you must not give any space the class name must not contain any space but the class name it's just a good practice or the best practice it must start with an upper case and wherever we get a space again it must start with an upper case simple example let's say i want to declare i want to declare one second i want to declare a class name as a, a black dog then i cannot use space instead use this upper case this is upper case this is upper case it is just a good practice okay so i i want to give the class name as whiteboard then should use upper case don't use space so this is just a good practice okay here upper case here upper case some people also write like this black underscore dog isn't it a good practice it's a good practice not for all the applications if you are developing the server code 
let's say yourself is developing some internal server code then underscore is a good practice so in normal application try to avoid this because every programming has its own standard so if you are writing a application just use this as the standard don't try to use any special characters though we can use dollar as the special character we can use underscore but don't use this unnecessarily don't make it complicated typically we use underscore if it is something called inner class so as of now since we don't know inner class let's not talk about it okay we use dollar Shira. yes Yadvinder I have a question regarding this final keyword can it yeah. be used with any data member any or data. has it got its limitation for example obviously it can't be used can it be used with a boolean Yes, yes, yes. So. No, 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 definitely yes. It can be used with a anything you want to make. Okay, so anything that you want to make constant value. Yes. Uh, we can use it. Use 100% it, uh, correct, correct. See, I'll, okay. I'll, I'll conclude in this way. For using right. final, there is no limitation on the data type. You can use the final with string, boolean, int, double, or any of the data members. Okay? Okay, clear. Thank yeah. you. Okay. So I was explaining you the standard naming convention for a class. Okay. So we generally use dollar if it is inner class. So let's not worry about inner class. We use underscore if we are writing server code. Okay. Other than that, for any other applications, we use uppercase and wherever you expect a space, instead of space, again start with an uppercase. This is just a industry standard. Still, I can write the class as uh, hello. Does not make any sense. Another one. Generally, we give the class name as noun. Generally, the class names are noun. Okay. This is the standard for declaring the class. Then, what about the variables? The standard for defining the variable is, we call it as camel case. We call it as camel case. For example, I have to declare a variable as monthly salary. Then I define it as lowercase. Again, I start with uppercase. For example, integer. Okay, it starts with the lowercase. Wherever you expect a space, again, don't give the space because space is not expect accepted. Again, start with an uppercase. So this we call it as a camel case. Okay, so this is this is the standard for declaring the variables. Okay, for example, mobile number. How do you define long? mobile start with an uppercase okay this is how we declare them so this is just the best practice can't I define it as MN yes you can define but this MN, people cannot recognize what is the meaning of MN. But by looking into this variable name, certainly a developer or the programmer can understand something. Okay, this is one of the data member, which, um, you know, which, which has got some meaning. So try to use the variable name and let it be more elaborative so that by looking into the name itself, the one can guess what the data it holds. Okay, so this is the standard for uh, the variable okay now we discuss the standard for variables and we discuss the standard for uh, 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 class we also discuss the standard for constant constant value as like I said constant value uh, must be in a constant uh, var a a member must be in uppercase for example double or float so I use a keyword called final 
final double pi equal to 3.142 you can declare it as float also if you are interested okay this is how we define very important this is very important this is called a constant am I clear okay this is about the standards about the variables and now let me classify some of the variables or the data members okay there are two types of data members very very important concept one is called primitive one is called primitive data members another one is called non primitive another one is called non primitive data member non primitive data member is also called as the custom rather than calling it as data member it is data type this is called custom data type or non primitive data type this is called primitive data type what are the primitive data types available in Java int long float double char boolean these are all the primitive data types and you also have something called short and byte though we don't use it it is there so generally we don't use this okay these are all the primitive data types and what are the non primitive data types very important as of now we have seen only one non primitive data type that is called string one of the non primitive this is an inbuilt this is called inbuilt when I say inbuilt what is the meaning this is the data type which is called non primitive data type which is already provided by Java these are also all all of these are primitive data types which are inbuilt what is the meaning the when I say inbuilt it is already provided by Java so these are all inbuilt primitive data types and this is inbuilt non primitive data types but the very beauty of Java is we can create our own our own data types or we can create custom data type perfectly possible in Java that's the beauty of Java and believe me in the project 90% of the cases we use custom data type are we clear so how to write the custom data type we will see in in further classes definitely not now okay so remember in the entire uh, in the entire uh, course many of the cases I use we are going to learn this further many of the cases I already used saying that this we are going to see in further or understand in further classes so when I said this I don't generally forget okay I, I really take up the topic as and when it is really needed so you you can you know you can uh, trust me on this okay so 90% of the cases we use custom data types okay apart from that these are all inbuilt data types in inbuilt you have primitive as well as non primitive <clears throat> so how do I since I'm new to Java how do I recognize or identify or differentiate between a primitive data type and a non primitive data type okay Th there is a hint just observe all the primitive data types start with lowercase all these data types start with lowercase whereas the non primitive start with uppercase okay there are some more inbuilt non primitive data types for example there is something called
float please observe f upper case f lower case this is called primitive this is called non primitive similarly we have something called long l is upper case that's why i said be careful in java because it is case sensitive okay this is long and this is primitive long so we are going to understand all these things in future this is about the data type do you have any questions in this this is about the data types okay in today's context we discussed about two things one is called the constant or the data member data member second one is something called function or functionality functionality okay one is data member or simply the data another one is called function i have explained a scenario of uh, if you remember just now i explained the scenario of uh, registration through uh, for for a matrimonial website where where the user enters some details like height the salary name contact and all then finally they click on that register button so clicking on the register button is a functionality to get that functionality done we need the data okay i'll explain with another example now i have a login page i have a simple login page i have some fields for example username username is a field and the password password is in another field i click on login right see let's this page i call it as login page in this login page if someone wants to let's say manually test this what do they do they enter some username they enter some password click on login if the username and password is proper login is successful and it should take us to home page correct this is first thing this is through manual testing and if you want to automate this forget about negative scenario that if you don't enter username password probably it has to come to the same page with an error message okay now if you want to automate this fine you need to consider two things one is entering the data entering the password as the data so two data members are involved one data member another data member plus also an action is involved here that is clicking on the button once you click on the button something must happen here once you click on this once you click on this button when you perform an action something must happen what is that something it must take you to a home page before it takes you to home page you need to check whether username and the password is valid or not if the username and password is valid it must take you to home page or if it is negative that is if the login is failed then it must take you to again the same page login page but with an error message correct it means to say here some logic is involved or some functionality is involved is it clear so it, today's discussion is this functionality or the action these actions internally uses the data are we clear right so now in java how to write this action or how to perform this functionality clear the functionality or the actions i ask a question ashishira sorry yeah please um you've given this example from a testing perspective isn't it yes correct and um, it involves as you said two things one is the data another one is action performed correct. on that data right correct um but 
I I feel that there's another. Uh, I could be wrong, but maybe we will cover this in, a, in another um, uh, class under selenium. I don't know. Okay. But um, I think another thing which I think is involved is the identification of um, these elements, like text element or text text boxes okay. and all that. Yes. See. Isn't it? Okay. Correct. I mean, if we're if we're covering this in 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 uh, under selenium in another different class, then I don't want to waste your time. But that was just my question. Yes. Yes. I'll tell you. I'll tell you. I, I have the answer for this question. Okay. I'll explain in this way. Let's say you have a page with some fields, like it can be text field or radio book, radio button or checkbox or maybe button. Here, <clears throat> when I say action, from Java perspective, from Java perspective, identifying the element is also an action. Hope you are able to understand. Okay. I'm identifying. Yes, yes. Uh, I'm identifying a field, text field. It's an action. I'm identifying. See, before I click on the button, I should identify the button first. There could be possibilities yes. of different buttons, but I don't want all the different buttons. I want only one button. That button is login button. So identifying the login button is also one function. Correct. Entering the data here in the text field, text field, or entering the data is also function. Correct. So, so everything yes. is considered as function, and these functions come as an inbuilt function, inbuilt function in Selenium. You need not write right, okay. the functions. Okay. But okay. Selenium okay. does not know when you click on the login button what is supposed to be done. Selenium does not know. For that, you need to write the logic that when someone clicks on the button, yes. I should take the username, I should take the password and check whether the username password is proper or not. That is your custom logic. You understand? Right? Yes. Okay. Thank you. Yeah, welcome. Any other questions? Okay. Uh, are you guys familiar with any of the automation framework? This question is for all the participants. Are you guys familiar with any of the automation framework? Because my next concept, uh, I need this answer to start with or to consider the examples for my next topic. Shweta says no. Okay. Yeah, then this is no as well. Okay. Many of these many of the some disturbance it seems. Okay. Your, fine. your voice is Hello? Is there any problem from my end? Everyone able to Hello? hear me? Now your voice is uh, breaking, breaking up. Oh, is it? My voice. Just give me one second. Many of you have answered that uh, they are not, um, you know, not much familiar with the framework. So let me take in general some examples. Okay. So imagine you have to now you have got a scenario in your company that you need to uh, you need to automate a test case for login page you need to automate the test case for login page why i am taking this simple example because everyone are familiar with this login page login someone enters login right here there are two data members involved. One is data member one called username, data member two called password. Now, apply your concepts which you have learned previously. What data types I can use for username? String. String. And even for password. Even for password also, it is string, right? So that is for username and password, I use string. 
So while testing, there are different ways of testing this, but I will explain you just only one way of testing. What do I do is, I use an Excel sheet. Or let me open the Excel sheet itself. I use an Excel sheet. In the Excel sheet, I may store the data. Username, password. The actual values may be admin, admin at one, two, three. Finance, finance at one, two, three. User, then I say USR at one, two, three. Just I'm taking some dummy examples. So these are all my data. These are all my data. Now what do I do? I write the test case. I write the test case by using Java. I write the test case by using Java. Selenium test case by using Java. I call it as Java Selenium test case. Here very important thing. I need to write the functionality. What functionality I need to write? What functionality I need to write? I need to write a functionality for validating 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 username and password for me to validate the username and password I need two data what are the two data I need two data what are the two data one is the password the another one is username okay here here I must write the code here I must write the code for actually validating the username and the password okay and this this entity which performs the functionality performs the functionality is called as in any programming language it is called as a function it is called as a function what is the meaning a function is the one which performs some functionality in Java it is called as a method in Java a function is called as method most of the languages uses or calls it as a function but in Java we call it as a method method means a function which performs some action or which performs some functionality understood so now next question what is the syntax to write this function or method a function must have the name the function must have the name okay the function must have the name this is called the body of the function or the method from now I'm going to call it as method okay I don't call it as function I call it as method the name of the method and this is called the body of the method this is called the body of the method so here within the body here I write the actual logic in our example what is the logic to check or to validate username and password so here I write the logic logic is technically call as, called as implementation it is technically called as implementation 
okay from now implementation is nothing but the logic okay so how are we going to define a method or a, or a function we need to write the name open brace close brace right within this I can write the implementation or the logic next as like I was explaining to validate the username and the password you need that username and the password username password may come as an input if your function or your logic or your method needs any input you can take input if your function or action return some output you can give that output here this is the structure of the method that is output input name and this is called the scope or the body it's also called as the body or the scope okay and within inside this we write the logic that logic is technically called as called as implementation okay here very important thing this input can be 0 or n that is it can be 0 or multiple when I say multiple it can be 10 100 200 any number it can be any number but output can be 0 or 1 the output of from a method can be 0 or 1 the input for a method can be 0 or n please remember this somewhere I'm going to store this image as method structure I store this as a method structure please go through this and ask me if you have any questions I have a question yes you said uh, input can be 0 to n any number yeah Not num number no, no, no 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 I, I didn't say it's a number I said input can be any in numbers okay uh, when I say in numbers it is not the in number input it can be any input yeah. of any yes, numbers yes. yeah sure okay thank you yeah any other questions okay yes you should have. yes Nitin. Nitin please tell me Hello. What do you mean by a 0 to 1? I mean like only one input can be fed or like, I mean output can be fed or? Yes, it is 0 or 1 output. You can you can return only one output. Example, okay. let me just give you one, one quick example. Okay. Just let me give you one example. I keep this. I use this method structure separately now I write here just observe I want to write a function for login validating the login now what do I do I give a function name observe here I need to have the name for the function give some meaningful name for example validate login open this close this typically this is called as the scope of the method within this I need to write the logic logic is technically called as implementation but for me to validate the login you tell me how many inputs are required two inputs correct yes yes okay two inputs two inputs first input second input remember this inputs are at the right side of the name of the method when I write the method this is on the right side input left side output okay so how many in our case 2 I said that it can be 0 to n 0 to n correct no it is 0 to n but in my case how many inputs I need two inputs I need what are the two inputs the first one 
user name what is the second one the password so username and the password is an input for me this is the first input this is the second input so now to understand any programming language you need to think in two different ways imagine this is your brain your brain has left two parts left brain brain main conscious mind and conscious mind okay so first thing you need to think in the realistic but you need to think in general second one you also think as a programmer if you 100% think as a programmer you will fail if you 100% think only in the real time scenario you will fail you need to think in a realistic way as well as you need to think from the programming way why i explain this this is meaning there is a need for this when i say username i know what is username and the password how my program knows what is a username tell me what is the data type of username string string what is the password again string yeah. understood these two are input these two are input i'm going to validate for example if my username equal to admin if username equal to admin admin and if my password equal to admin 123 then i can say it is successful validation is successful correct then i should say that it is successful so this validate login method should return an output saying true what is the meaning successful let's say if the username is admin and the password is something wrong then the output may be negative output may be negative what is the negative output false so it means to say if everything is positive if everything is positive i return true if something is if something is not proper then i return false okay so can we take as in boolean yes so true and false is what is the data type of true and false boolean correct hence here i return the output type is boolean output type is boolean am i clear now compare this diagram with this diagram name input output the logic or implementation when i say output this is the data type of the output when i say input this is the data type of the input everyone understood but i actually written the i actually written using a keyword called written there is a keyword called written lower case keyword means reserved words i use written i may written true or i may written false i may written true or i may written false in what scenario you written true if the username and password is proper i written true if the username and pa password is not proper then i written false the written is a keyword which actually returns the output remember this is output this is output this is the actual output this is an actual output which is returned from this method and what is the data type of the output that is boolean 
So here, this is just the data type of an output, but this is an actual output. Are we clear? Yes, sir. Thank you. Yeah. And this we call it as some nice input parameters. We call it as what? Input parameters. Input parameters. I'm going to save this again. Please ask me questions. I will take you through multiple examples, okay? Different, different examples I'll give. And also we will write the program and execute that. Yeah, uh, Shishira, one doubt. Yeah. Uh, so for the Boolean, uh, do we need uh, a data to, to be saved, you know, instead of like, other than Boolean, do we need a separate variable name for that? you know, for this output be saved on that particular value. Can you please elaborate the question, Nitin? Yeah, uh, we have written Boolean here, right? Yeah. So it doesn't save any kind of, uh, you know, values in that. Okay, okay for, ex data type. for example, so uh, how do we... No, uh, um, correct me if I'm wrong, okay? You are telling this is the name and this is the data type, but here mm -hmm. we mentioned only data type. Do only we need to give type. any any name your question is that right right no we only have the data type and there is nothing to save that particular output which is uh, being returned okay. so like okay fine I'll write the uh, now just observe this okay sure Just observe. <clears throat> now, before I actually start with this, just let me explain one, one small uh, concept with the diagram. You will understand it very properly. Okay? Though I'm, I'm taking more time to explain this, but it gives you better clarity. Let's imagine that you want to collect water there is a tap okay and you keep you keep a bucket here you keep a bucket here to collect the water now the person comes this person performs an action on this tap. What action? He opened the tap. So this is called an action. When a, perform, when a person performs an action on the tap, the water comes here. So for the bucket, the water is an input. Correct? So or in the other way, bucket is used to collect the input which comes. Correct. Similarly, just keep this example, okay? You as a tester, you are going to call, you are going to call this method, you are going to call this method, okay? The method is taking two parameters. string username string password string password okay and you are going to check this and say boolean 
result. So based on the username and password you are going to check. If it is positive you say result equal to true. Let's say if it is negative you mention result equal to false. And finally you mention return result. Now just observe result is a variable. What is the data type of this variable? Why do I call it as a variable? Why not constant? Because it varies. It may vary from true to false, false to true. That's why it is a variable. What is the data type of the variable? Boolean. That's why here I mention it as Boolean. This was original question that here is the data type. Where is the variable? Here is the variable. But in this case, here is the variable, here is the data type. And this is the variable, this is the data type. But for this, this is the variable and this is the data type. Data type is this. So the written value, whatever it is returning, that is true or false, this is, this is, actual data actual data that I'm returning now the story is not yet completed I need to compare this with the diagram which I have mentioned here I have a question before you do that yeah Sorry, please sure yeah please <clears throat> am I right in saying that the the boolean result can be stored as well yes you can store and can can perform can can form uh, an input for other another I, or, I, I, I understood your question uh, it's perfectly possible and that's how we do in fact okay cheers okay i shall continue yes please okay now here a person is performing an action on the tap a person is performing an action on the tap when he performing an action on the tap the tap gives some input to the bucket. From the bucket perspective, it is an input. But from the tap perspective, it is an output. Now, similarly, as a tester, as a tester, I have the data in my Excel sheet. This is my test data. This is my test data. I have the test data in my Excel sheet. I may take the data from Excel sheet and I'm going to call this method. So how I'm going to call the method? I'm going to call the method as validate. And when I call the method called validate, the validate is taking two inputs. Consider this like a bucket which is used to store some data. So you need to pass the data. Now I take the data from Excel sheet and I pass the data. For example, string admin. And I may pass password as admin 123 or whatever it is, admin at the rate one, two, three. Admin at the rate one, two, three. This is my data. And I pass this data, okay? Please observe, this is actually the function. <clears throat> this is the actual function and when you write a function or a method, I don't call it as a function, I call it as a method. The method is executed only when it is called or invoked. 
only when it is called or invoked someone has to explicitly invoke this method so I'm going to call this method or I'm going to invoke this method so when I invoke this method then only it is executed remember if you write this method in your Java program it is not going to be executed unless you call that method Clear? question yeah, hold on just just one minute okay just one minute so from your perspective can I call this you are passing the data this is the actual data the actual data that is passed as an input is called as argument is called as an argument and this the one which accept is called as the parameter is called as a parameter that is from the accepting end it is called as a parameter from the passing end it is called as the argument now if I come back and correlate that the bucket is accepting hence bucket is called as the parameter and the water is coming hence water is the actual data it is called as argument it is called as an argument and someone is someone is initiating an action performing an action that is like you are calling the method Yadvinder your question please I was going to say, uh, I think I missed, uh, did you say val this validate is an inbuilt function or do we have to no, no. Uh, uh, define our own? We are not, as of now, with my context, we need to define. It's our own function, our own method that we okay. need to write okay. this method. Okay, first thing. Thank you. Second thing, from the broader perspective, the method may be an inbuilt or method may be custom. That is our own method, our own method. Okay, it hardly matters. We are just understanding what a method is all about. We don't care whether it is an inbuilt or whether it is custom. But in this context, it is custom that we need to write or we are supposed to write this type of method. Clear? Clear. And Thank you. And the logic and, and the syntax for calling the method the syntax for calling the method I have not not it started I just say call the method or invoke the method but there is a syntax involved you cannot simply call the method like this there is a syntax involved okay that syntax we will understand in a little while but for that we need to know what is an object is without the object you you, you, you cannot call this method or invoke the method so but the context is to understand how to write the method and what is parameter what is a written type so if someone asks what is written type what I'm returning I'm returning the result what is the data type of result boolean hence written type is boolean and this is called as a written type This is called as written type. Please never forget this. This is called as written type. This is called as the method name. This is called as the parameters. And this is the scope. And this is the implementation or the logic of the method. And this is an actual data. And an actual data can be written by using a keyword called written. Shweta, is it clear? Yes, okay. Thank you. Please observe this and ask me if you have any questions. Observe this for a while. Give me one few seconds, I'll have water and come back.
<coughs> sorry any questions now let us see more number of examples to get uh, uh, you know the comfortness with uh, about this method okay let me save this for a while now how do i write some methods okay let us take some examples i write a class with the name of the class correct open brace close brace remember this when I write a class <coughs> when I write a class generally in this class we can write any number of functions or methods we can write any number of functions this is function 1 or method 1 function 2 or method 2 function 3 or method 3 like that any number of methods I can write inside a class and the conclusion is this the methods are written within the class you cannot write you cannot write within the class you can write you cannot write any method outside the class in Java everything must be present within the class so how many number of functions or methods any number of functions or any number of methods okay the common question that people get here is which method to be written first so here here it is one two three right this is the sequence of the method so in Java the sequence of method does not matter you can write this as the first method third method second method or this as second first third anything it is possible so the sequence of method does not matter because the sequence depends on which one you are calling for example let's say the method name is m1 the method name is m2 the method name is m3 so now as of now what is the sequence let me just erase this what is the method sequence as of now the method sequence is 1 this is 2 this is 3 these are all the sequence now imagine I'm going to call the method like m2 I'm going to call the method I said that the methods are executed only when it is invoked or when it is called so I'm going to call the method first method I'm going to call it as m2 then I'm going to call M1 then I'm going to call M3 this may be the declared sequence or this is the sequence in which I have written the methods in my class but how they are actually executed which one is executed first first M2 is executed M1 is executed M3 is executed observe this sequence observe this sequence the sequence of methods at the time of writing inside a class does not matter it depends on the execution sequence okay so in whatever if you have hundred methods write inside the class where do you write inside does not matter in which sequence you write inside the class does not matter it all depends on how are we going to execute it okay let me take you through one realistic example to understand this imagine 
I have two methods. Imagine I have two methods. One method is called as login method. Login method. Second method is called as registration method. Registration method. <clears throat> so as per the sequence, first method is login, second method is registration inside the class. Okay, some class name, some class name, test case. So as a tester, you are supposed to call which method you call first? Do you call registration first and login or login first and then registration? A person can log in only if he is successfully registered. Hence, first we are going to call the registration method. Okay, then I'm going to call the login method. Correct? This is my sequence of execution. This is the sequence of execution. But, uh, but uh, this is the sequence of declaration. That is method declaration, method execution. So sequence of method declaration does not matter, but the method execution sequence matters. Am I clear? Okay. Let us see simple examples. I have written a class called calculator. I just said it is just a good practice. I can write the methods like add method. Add method. This is the name of the method. I want to add two numbers. I want to add two numbers. For example, integer first number integers second number can I call this as the parameters this as the method name what do I do integer result equal to first number plus second number integer result because I'm going to add two numbers and I'm getting the result and I finally say return result I just finally say return result just observe this when I add two numbers what is the meaning of integer integer means they are non-decimal numerics when I add two non-decimal numerics obviously I get the result also as a non-decimal numeric I'm returning the result what is, this is the actual data that I'm returning what is the data type of this? Integer. Yes. Let me take this. Result is a variable. The data type of result is an integer. The data type of result is an integer. And I am returning a result. Data type of result is an integer. Hence, hence, the return type of the method must also be an integer. Must also be an integer. Is it clear? This is one example. So, I have a question. Sorry. Um, please ask me. Yeah, please ask me. In line number three. In line number three, after, uh, you know, there's, there's, there's an open curly bracket. Yes, this one. Why is that? Yeah. Mm -hmm. What is this? In the method, yeah, okay. I should start what the method, the end the method, but here what did I do is I have instead of opening that here, I have opened it here. 
Yeah, that's fine. Okay. Okay. Okay, fine. Yes. To put it more in a simple way, it should be like this. Then my entire sequence will change. Okay. <laughs> you understood, no, Edwinder? Yes. Um, I got it confused with the curly bracket after class calculator uh, in okay. row, num uh, row number two. But I think for the the scope of the class it would okay. be bigger than the scope of a function, isn't it? Yes. Or a method. This okay. is the scope of the class. This yeah. is the scope of the method. Yeah, so each method will have its own scope, isn't it? Definitely, yes. I write okay. another, for example, I can write okay. another method. Multiply. I write another method called multiply. I'm going to write, I'm going to multiply. Just observe this, just observe this, okay? different examples I'm giving, okay? I may just say multiply. Am I taking any input here? No. I just directly say integer result equal to 10 multiplied by 20. That is the result is 200. 10 multiplied by 20 is 200. And I simply say return, oh, it is too much, return, return result. If you carefully observe this, what is the, what I'm returning result? What is the value of result? 10 into 220. What is the value? 200. What is the data type of this result? Integer. Hence, what must be the return type? What must be the return type? Integer. Must be an integer. Correct? It must be an integer. So this is one example where the method, this is an example where a class is having multiple methods. This is one method, this is another method. There are two methods in this example. Correct? There are two methods. One, one thing. Second thing, this method is taking some input parameters, taking some input, whereas this method is not taking any input. Clear? So, a method may take an input, may not take an input. A method may give an output, may not give an output. Simple example, method means a functionality or a function. Now, no. I want to sleep. I want to sleep, okay? Sleep is a method. At the time of sleeping, do I give any output? Nothing. I just mention it as void. What is the meaning? When the method is not returning anything, it when the method is not giving any output, mention it as void. Lowercase void, okay? So from now, if you see void, what is the meaning? The function is not returning or the method is not returning anything. So method is void. But for me to sleep, I don't require anything. I simply sleep. So I read the logic for sleeping here. This is an example for a method which does not take any input and nor it gives any output. Simple one example. Sorry, yeah, please. So why should I use the void method? Okay, okay fine. Mm -hmm. This is one common question. When I'm not returning anything, oh, keep it blank. Why are you writing void? Isn't isn't that the question? Yeah. Yeah, yeah. correct. So, but it is a language standard. This language follows this standard. The Java language follows this standard. Even at the time of learning, I also had the similar question. 
when a method is not returning anything let it be blank why it should be void why it should be void just it's just the language standard okay when you're not returning anything you have to mention it as void so in the method either you should have void or else you must have some data type but it cannot be blank it can never be blank clear yeah. okay this is an example so let me take this example Okay, so hence the return type of the method is integer. I add another method. Method name is multiply. I don't take any input. Please observe in this method the open opening brace is present in the same line. Here I have written in another line, but it does not matter. I already concluded this. You can write it like this also. This is my method. This is the open brace and this is the close brace. Wherever you want, you can do it. But let it be readable. Okay. Multiply. So I'm going to imagine when just just I just mentioned this as void. What is the meaning? There is a multiply method which is not taking any input and not giving any output. Now I just mentioned integer result equal to 10. 20 so the result is 200 I just want to print this result I just want to print this result how do we print system dot out dot print ln system dot out dot print ln I just mention result so the name of the class must be calculator the calculator dot Java is already there Okay, somewhere it's already present. This is my class. Any questions? If you don't have any question, I have a question. If you don't have any question, I have the question. Can I ask my question? Yep, go ahead. Okay. <clears throat> See, this is the scope of the class. This is the scope of the class. And there are two methods. One is this method. Another one is this method. Yesterday, when I was explaining the uh, data members, I explained this concept. The methods or the data member which is present within a method can I call it as the variable correct can I call it as a variable it varies depending on whatever the data I pass now observe this carefully the name of the variable is result here of here also the name of the variable is result don't you think it is duplicated no uh, because it's within the scope of under separate yeah yeah correct correct see this is the variable and the scope of this variable is only this outside the scope result cannot be identified in the same way outside the scope this result cannot be identified it is something like this 
there is one house here there is a person called John is a perfect possibility that another house here there is another person his name may also be John possibility so this is a local variable which it can be used only within the local scope similarly this is another local variable which can be used in its own scope correct so local variable names can be same but within this I cannot have one more result remember this within the same scope I cannot have two variables with the same name not possible for example there is a method called add method here I cannot have integer i equal to 10 integer i equal to 20 not possible because the scope is same let's say this is wide or something okay here i is already there you cannot declare i once again not possible this is not possible but this is perfectly possible clear okay so this is how we write methods this is how we write methods methods or functions now we need to really understand how to call the method now we know how to write the method now we need to know how to call the method Okay. Sure, I have a question before you do that. Yeah. Uh, in the multiply method, you have put a void in there, right? Mm -hmm. So when we get a result, when we print this result from mm -hmm. the multiply uh, method, would it would it not give us output? anything? Or, okay. Uh, yeah. Would would it give us any output, or would it just be blank would give nothing because the method is void okay so please so uh, I'll explain I can I explain one example some 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 realistic sure. example to make you understand this think about the situation there is a person this person who is eating some bread is eating a bread piece this for this person he is eating the bread piece meanwhile a dog comes assume that this is dark it doesn't look like the dog though okay this person it starts waving its tail this he is a kind-hearted person he throws a piece of the bread piece of the bread to the dog okay this dog eats the same bread clear the dog does not do anything but from the human perspective you are passing an output you are passing an output to the dog this is an output from you to the dog the dog is not giving you anything back and you also in your eat process you are also not returning anything as the eat process you are not returning anything but in in the process of eat just observe this here for example we are throwing the bread piece you are throwing the bread piece please observe I just mentioned wide please carefully observe this logic the eat method the eat method is present in a class called person class start and this is the scope of this is the scope of the class within this class I have a method called eat method the scope of the method is this within this method he is calling another method this is another method called throw what I'm throwing bread now correlate this example with this there is a multiply method in a calculator class 
where multiply method does not return anything. But multiply method calling another method called print because print is also a method or a function. What this print ln does, it is going to print on the new line. Correct? So one method called print ln is called within another method called multiply. So this is not considered as an output. Hence, I'm just mentioned it as void. Consider this like a calculator, multiply method, print ln method. Okay, Edwinder. Uh, Confusion? Yes. Okay. Because See? you are, you from a person's perspective you're throwing the bread, right? Yes. From the person's so, perspective, yes. Correct. Okay, okay fine. Uh please observe. I'll try to give one more example, okay? Just let this example be here. I'll try, give, I'll try to give one more example. What is ultimately, what is a method? A method is the one which performs some action or which performs some work, which performs some functionality, correct? If we observe, let's say I want to call a person. I want to call some person. I want to make the call to a person. So can I say calling is one function? This calling function internally may have other functions like unlock mobile, unlock my mobile, dial number, then make a call. These are all called sub functions sub functions which are the part of the main function that is in our day-to-day -day life to let's say I, I have to say send an email to a person then I have to switch on my computer I have to open Outlook I have to type the mail I have to click on send button cumulatively I call it as sending email function so one work may internally contains lot of other works. Similarly, here when I multiply, this is my main one function. As the part of the multiply, I actually multiply and I want to also print the result to the user. Okay. So when you call as, when you call a sub function here, this can be considered as a sub function. Okay, calling a sub-function can be considered as, uh, as like an output. I mean, whatever the result you are passing can be considered as an output, but it is the part of this main work. But from this main work, I am not returning anything. That's why I have mentioned it as void. Okay, uh, it's clear now, I think, because uh, um, I was under the impression that when you put void for, an, for a method, yeah. Anything that's within the scope of that method will be, become void and won't return anything. But since it's calling another sub function, it will return the, the results, so, which is clear now. Okay. I think. Thank you. Okay. Welcome. Anyone has any questions? Okay. Um, can we try to run this on Eclipse or you don't want okay. to do that? Yes, we can, we can definitely run this on Eclipse and we are going to do that now. All right, sir. Okay. If you guys observe, again I'll start recording, okay. Uh, so I have a class called calculator with one method, another method, and one more method so they totally there are three methods so let us see how to call add method and how to call multiply method let me start first calling the multiply method okay can I say all these methods are the part of the same class they're all the methods of the same class if you want to call a method 
from another method of the same class then we call just by its name just by its name that's all so I want to call add method add method takes two parameters I should pass two values what value should I pass can I pass 52.6 comma 87.5 is it possible Please. no because they are not in flow yes correct see here first number and second number the data type is int int means numeric non-decimal hence I can pass only non-decimal value Sorry, uh, just one question. Yes. Uh, we can still uh, pass the floating uh, value, but it would only take the other. Yes, the ex one, ex right? exactly, exactly. Okay. Yes, yes. It won't show any errors, right? So it may not give any error, but the thing is, it will not give you an expected result. Yes, okay. Thank you. Yeah. The question was like, you know, when I pass this, it ignores, simply ignores this value. It considers only 52. Whatever after the decimal is ignored. Okay. So, would it, um, sorry, Shishu, would it um, in this case would it um, round it off to the nearest um, value, nearest um, integer value? Yes. Yes. What is the nearest integer value? For example, 52.5. Nearest integer value is 52. So this. Yep. 0.5 is ignored. 0.5 is ignored. So we will not get an exact result. We will get a wrong result. We should not do that because we should not take the advantage of the uh, programming language uh, because it is adjusting. Um, since because it is adjusting, I cannot take its advantage. It gives me an unexpected result. Okay. Fine. So. Uh, just to summarize, I have the class with three methods. Okay, three methods. They are all the methods of the same class. And to call any method from another method of the same class, then we just call it by its name. When I multiply method, I just call. Why I'm not passing any data? Because it is it does not take any input. That's why I cannot pass any any data. Okay. And one more thing, one more thing, here if you consider this add method, this is called as parameter. I already explained from the accepting end, there is a method which is accepting two parameters. So this is called parameter and I'm passing two values here. I'm passing two values from the passing end. It is called as argument. We in general call it as arcs or argument. This is called parameter and this is called argument. But ultimately they are the same. So number of parameters and the number of arguments must be same number of parameters to Hence, I need to pass two arguments. If you pass one more, it gives you error. If you pass one more, it gives you error. You should be very clear with this. Here, there is number of parameters are zero. Hence, number of argument is also zero. So, while calling the method, the number of parameters and the arguments must be the exact match. Okay. Yeah. What if in, in the arguments you, you give one value instead of two and would that be given a No, no, error. It should be the exact error. match. It should be the exact match. Okay. Yeah. Why I'm telling this is because few people think that if I pass three parameters instead of, uh, let's say, for example, I pass add 52, 87, 68. When I call, it is taking only two. So it takes 52, 87. It is going to ignore 68. No, it does not happen in that way. It gives you an error. 
so it must be the exact match okay it's the first thing second thing can i run this program now can i run the program simply not possible because no. for us to run the program we need to have main method we need to have public. main method it is public static void main method you need to have string string arguments okay to run the program we can have this string argument but observe I also mentioned one point that a method is executed only if someone calls that or only if someone invokes that with this example add is executed multiply is executed because there is a person or there is another method who is calling these two methods that is add method is called multiply method is called but these two methods are called by another method called as calling method but who is going to call this method this is executed only if this method is called but no one is calling that method am i clear with this so this method can call other two methods only if this is called but no one is calling this method so that's why first thing this method must be called by someone we can call that method by main method we can call this method within the main method so remember any method can call any number of other methods any number of other methods but a method is executed only when it is called so calling method is calling multiply method as well as add method but nobody is calling the calling method hence this is never executed if it is never executed multiply and add method is also not executed so we have to make sure that we first have to call this calling method okay fine next what is the way or how can i call this calling method from main from main okay so remember the main method is static main method is static please observe this main method is static it is very very important and main method is called by jvm is called by whom jvm so if someone ask or it may be an interview question if okay if someone ask who is the caller of main method or who is going to invoke the main method the answer is jvm jvm calls the main method clear i will explain how it works here there is a calculator dot java let me open command prompt and compile the java program okay first let me go to the d drive so because the program is in d drive the program is in d drive so that's why i have to first go to that location java c is the compiler calculator dot java so i'm compiling this calculator dot java after successful compilation i got the dot class file now i need to execute this execution happens in the first class we understood execution happens from the jvm by calling the main method now when i say java what is the name calculator now what happens is you are giving the calculator dot class to the jvm now jvm calls jvm calls this is my program jvm calls the main method when jvm calls the main method main is also method or function like this please understand this is add method multiply method similarly main is also one method okay and every method is 
executed only when it is called but my main method is called by JVM hence main method is executed within the main method you have to call the calling method or you can call any other methods also okay you can call any other method but within the main method I'm going to call the method called calling method calling method internally calls multiply method as well as add method but there is a syntax since the main method is static observe this is the main method this is static since the main method is static static method this is non-static method what is the meaning of static let us not understand as of now okay this is a method this is also a method but they are non-static a static method can call non-static method by creating creating objects very very important a non a static method can call non static method by creating an object I'm introducing the new word called object okay so this is a beginning of object orientation clear how do we create an object what is an object that's in our next class not now clear this is how we come to a conclusion or we come to a need that what is or why do I need an object remember object is required to call any of the methods in Java in Java clear with this so now to call this method I have I have a need for creating an object so what is object how to call the method what is the syntax we are going to understand in our further classes okay so in the today's whole context what we need to understand is that in a class we can have any number of methods main is also a method but main method is static method and main method is called by JVM main method is called only once by JVM main method can call other methods of the class in class we can have any number of methods and the sequence of method declaration does not matter but the sequence of execution matters inside the method we can have the variables which are called as local variables we can call that as a local variables one method of a class can call the other methods of the same class directly that is no object no object required no object is required but to call any method from the main method we need an object we need an object and the basic purpose of method is to perform some functionality or to perform some logic or to perform some work this is the context of the entire class okay so I am done from my side if you have any questions please ask me just observe this see imagine there are two possibilities okay first possibility I have a class individual class okay and I want to run this classes individually for example this is a class this is Z class just giving you an example okay this is B class fine I may have different different requirements I open command prompt and now I want to run a class so dot class is created only because of the dot Java so that is pretty much understood now I want to run what is a command I use Java and the class name a correct now what is the meaning I'm individually calling the class called a now if you want to execute this class a 
suddenly the class A needs public static void main. Am I clear? In the yes. same way, if you want to call Z class B class and you want to execute it, then that class, that corresponding class must have main method. Okay? This is this is the situation generally when we are learning or when you are when we are practicing. But in project, what exactly happens is I have the project or software. Here I may internally have lot of dot class files. So a bundle of dot class files, okay. May be given in the form of var file or may be given in the form of jar file. Or maybe in the ER format. Different format. Let's not worry about those formats. Okay, let's not worry about these formats. Basically, in your software or in your application, you may have lot and lot. When I say lot and lot, maybe in uh, 5,000 to 6,000 classes are present. Okay, in that case, in all these cases, we cannot write public static void main uh, in, inside all the class. So instead, we write one class with public static void main. This class may internally call this. This 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 may internally call this. Like this, the chaining happens. You remember one example I have given long back, train example in, in one class. Train has an yes. en engine which, which, can, which can make all the wagons to run. So all these are independent dot classes, independent dot classes. So this is like one class, the engine is like a class with public static wide main. This can link to, this can be linked to other classes. So typically in the project, what happens is we'll have one public static wired main within a class, which internally going to, you know, connect to all the other classes and make your entire application run. But this is only in the demo or practice purpose. What do we do is we write a class and write one public static wired main. Okay. But as the part of our course, in further classes and probably after getting the comfortness with Java, we are going to see how to create the jar file, how to link from one program to other program, how to run all these things we are going to understand. Okay. Yeah. And uh, uh, thank you, Ishida. And one more question. Yes, please. Is that um, in a class, can we define uh, the main function anywhere? Yes. You know, like, uh, you actually uh, gave it on the last. It it's not like you have to give on the first line itself, right? Nothing. Wherever you want, as like I said, main is also a method, and for declaration of the method, there is no sequence. These are all methods. Main is also a method. I can write if I want. I can write it as the first method also. Absolutely no issue. Okay. Uh, one more thing. Yeah. Um, <clears throat> You mentioned uh, this, the main as static, right? Yes, correct. So if, if you take in a point, you know, like even the um, calling method and the multiply, all these methods are static because uh, we are actually point, uh, like giving a stable variable, right? I mean, there is a value which is already set. So mm -hmm. that can be set as static as well, right? Yes, with this so, what, what context. Yes, as a non-static, yeah, sorry. Yes, with this context, the methods can be static. Multiply method can be static. Add method can also be static. Yes. Static. Yes. Uh, but still, why do we point it as non-static? Is there a particular reason or? No, uh, pretty simple reason. Uh, I didn't want to talk about static at this point. That's why I mentioned it as non-static. And 90%, okay, okay, another thing, 90% of the cases, methods are non-static, 90% of the cases. Remaining 10% in special cases, we make the method as static, okay? So what is the design scenario or design need that the need for making the method as static, we are going to discuss probably in the middle of the course, okay? Here, main method is static, which has a particular reason. 
okay so and our java is object orientation the object oriented programming language and everything should be uh, discussed keeping the object in mind that's why i didn't talk much about static uh, at this stage okay all right yeah thank you shishira yeah thanks a lot welcome shishira i have got a question yes yadvinder uh before um, at the time when you were telling us about the structure of um, um structure of the class called, structure uh, of the class or the structure of the, no, no, the, the, the uh, when you were when you were explaining about a function in you know, a structure of a function or a method yes. right okay. before that you asked a question um if anybody knows about a testing framework yeah 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 and yeah and then you and you give us an example of um, you know login screen and with, with an excel sheet mm -hmm. with all the information mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. but you did not explain about the framework so what is the framework so it, you know we missed that uh, no, the uh, answer to that question no okay fine uh, why i have asked that question uh, yadvinder why i have asked that question is i wanted to give this example by taking the framework as an example i could have explained this in a different way by taking selenium framework as the benchmark okay that is so what is the framework uh, hold hold on hold on let me explain okay let me explain so in the framework what do we do is the data which you are supposed to pass as an input may come from different files that file may be an excel sheet okay so i wanted to talk in that perspective clear that's why i asked whether everyone knows framework or not and since many of them have answered that they are, they are not much familiar with the framework so i had to drop that part that or that context okay. because when okay, people it. don't know what is framework there is no point in me explaining taking the framework as an example because you will not understand this and nor the framework clear that's why i clearly separated okay. java from the framework now the second okay. question what is the framework uh, we are going to understand in future fine thank you okay much. i i can definitely answer but i don't know up to what extent you will understand because i have the solid answer for everything okay if you ask me framework it's 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 like you know i i need at least 15 to 20 minutes to talk about the framework at least okay and no I, i see I that yeah yeah and i can understand your curiosity but uh, you know definitely we need some time right yadvinder no oh, that's fine i mean the reason i think i raised this point now is because um, i thought probably we missed it with no, this no. whole discussion definitely you didn't miss that's it <laughs> we okay. are going to talk thank in future yeah thank you thank you